All right, well, to keep these lectures as short as possible, uh, they've been broken up to several aspects. Um, so this is talking about some clinical pearls or clinical questions. I see a lot of uh, uh, novice visit or novice users of ultrasound in their clinical practice um, kind of misunderstanding some of these, these questions we're going to talk about. So I thought they'd be useful to have in a lecture form for us here. So we're going to um, talk about how do we clinically use um, an eFAST exam. Um, and don't worry about reading each one of those questions because we're going to address each of them individually. So, you know, the question is, an eFAST only useful in trauma patients? So FAST uh, stands for Focused Assessment with Sonography and Trauma. That uh, includes scanning of three different A's areas, um, the heart, the lungs, and the abdomen. And it is not uh, only useful in uh, trauma patients. In fact, the FAST exam, if you look at many of the critical care ultrasound protocols that are out there, whether it be the RUSH, um, uh, is the one that uh, we typically use at my um, location, um, but there are many others, and they all include a portion of the FAST exam, if not all of the FAST exam, uh, along with other body areas or other body structures. Um, it is very useful in still medical patients. You could find uh, spontaneous rupture of the spleen, uh, you could see um, people that have had, I've had experience with people having colonoscopies that have lacerated their spleen, uh, simply spontaneous rupture, like I mentioned. I've seen bowel perfs. There's a lot of things that can show uh, pathology uh, by using a FAST exam. So just remember that you're imaging three areas, all of which those areas can uh, lead to hypotension in patients if there's different pathologies there. And a FAST exam uh, may be useful, or at least a portion of it if not all of it, including other uh, organ systems or structures. Um, just remember that when you're talking to people, uh, at least in emergency medicine, we're used to calling it a FAST, uh, but if you're talking to an obstetrician or you're talking to your ICU docs, they may not understand what a FAST exam is. But if you say, you know, there's free fluid within the abdomen, uh, they can clearly understand what that means. Um, so I've made that mistake before by saying the FAST is positive and they may not quite understand that nomenclature. So. Uh, second, should e an eFAST exam be performed on all trauma patients? You know, we have the ninth edition of the ATLS guidelines at the time of this, uh, this video recording, um, and they do recommend that uh, FAST be a new skill station, and they say either DPL or FAST should be used to, on the abdomen to, uh, as a source of evaluating for hemorrhagic shock. And that's the key is that shock. So this is not necessarily a recommendation for all normotensive patients. Um, it doesn't. It has limited clinical utility in normal tensive patients, but it should definitely be used in hemorrhagic shock um, or in your hypotensive patients to evaluate um, um, why they have hypotension because it can be more than one issue or a single issue and, and maybe in the thorax, uh, like we said, the cardiac, um, a pericardiac or a cardial tamponade um, or, you know, free fluid in the abdomen. So they're it shouldn't be performed necessarily on all um, trauma patients, but definitely on the um, patients with a low blood pressure. Um, this is often a uh, thing that I bang my head against the wall for. You know, can a negative eFAST negate the need for a CT scan? I'm not, you know, we, there's no true answer for that. A single, what I will tell you is a single negative eFAST exam should not be used in isolation, meaning a single FAST exam should never be your only imaging study. Uh, you could repeat um, lab work, um, repeat FAST exam, um, and continued ab uh, abdominal exams. Um, and then if abdominal pain improves, not need further imaging as far as a CT scanner, but a single negative FAST exam is not your answer. You have to do repeat exams, uh, including repeat imaging with the um, ultrasound machine. Um, should a trauma patient with a positive FAST exam go directly to the operating room? So an unstable patient with free fluid in the abdomen or pelvis should by definition go to the OR. However, we are having increasing success with um, angiography um, and uh, interventional radiology doing procedures. Um, so there is the possibility that they may not need to, but if they have persistent hypertension, hypotension, despite resuscitative efforts, they probably need to go to the OR. Uh, time will tell with the literature what, uh, what we need to do for these patients. Um, but depending on the availability of those things, you know, the ATLS answer is they need to go to the OR. 
Stable patients, if you choose to do a fast exam on them because you have you know, low likelihood or you're going to OBS them or you're not thinking you're going to do a CT, if they have a free fluid in the abdomen or pelvis, um, you should expedite uh, transport to a CT for further imaging because you really want to identify that primary injury, not necessarily the results of that primary injury. So, um, so moving on. Is there free fluid in the pelvis pathologic on the EFAST exam? So this is kind of a trick question. Uh, in men, yes, uh, they should not have uh, physiologic fluid uh, in the pelvis, and so that should be considered pathologic fluid. However, uh, female uh, patients of reproductive age may have physiologic fluid depending on uh, their ovulatory cycle, and so small amounts uh, should not be considered necessarily pathologic, but you should probably repeat your ultrasound um, on the patient. Now, if there's fluid up out of the pelvis, say in the upper quadrants, the left or the right, then yes, absolutely, that's pathological. But if you only see a small amount um, on the in the pelvis, then um, you need to consider that to be physiologic fluid. Now, with that said, how I measure that is, you know, I like to look at the uterus and cut it in thirds. If it goes up more than a third of the um, posterior wall of the uterus, then um, you need to consider that to be likely uh, pathologic fluid. It has to be a very small amount of fluid to be physiologic fluid. Um, so we have multiple limitations, or what are the limitations to performing an EFAST exam? So air is our enemy. Subcutaneous air uh, clearly does not let us into uh, visualizing the, um, uh, the thoracic compartment or the intra-abdominal or the abdominal compartment or the pericardial sac. Um, so that's our enemy. Obesity, this gets, uh, as our population um, becomes more obese, this becomes difficult. Um, for us to see. Uh, it does not mean that you shouldn't try, but it can be difficult. A Foley catheter is not your friend. You need to perform your fast before they place a Foley catheter. Once that Foley is placed, and you, then you lose your pelvic view, uh, a sonographic window into the pelvis, and um, you essentially have to call that an equivocal study because you won't be able to see that fluid collecting in the um, cul-de-sac. Um, ascites, you can't differentiate blood from acidic fluid. So if a patient has liver disease, looks like they have, um, uh, have cirrhosis and would have ascites, you can't differentiate that fluid. And then uh, the uncooperative patient, you know, a patient that's um, flailing about or uh, moving and um, um, is difficult to get to cooperate, to take a deep breath, to evaluate for uh, their diaphragms, their lung sliding, those different type of things, they're just difficult to do it on. Um, doesn't mean you shouldn't be trying, but you should be trying to... Uh, figure out how to get them cooperative if it's uh, some type of med or whatnot to allow you to get an ideal study. We don't want to limit our study uh, due to that and miss pathology in our patient. So hopefully that uh, helps with some of the, the misnomers out there. Uh, let us know if you have any questions or comments. Thank you.